And good morning everybody, Silas back again today and we have got an extremely busy next few days. Actually tomorrow is the weekend, but I do have stuff going on tomorrow too. But today, tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, there's a ton of things going on. So I just kind of thought, you know what, I don't have time to film a full video right now. So I'm just going to film a whole, almost a week of stuff. Starting out, I've got to get the back of my truck cleaned out. The guy had this great big shelf for 50 bucks, so I couldn't turn that down. It's not a real heavy duty one, but it's not real flimsy either. So this will make me some good storage right here. Okay, I had to get that guy unloaded real quick. He had that old 54 Ford cab, and then he had the flatbed off of that welding truck that I sold a while back. He didn't want the bed. He's making it into a winch truck. So he brought that stuff out to me, got that unloaded. But uh, this stuff here, kind of cool. This is all stuff that I found in the scrap over the last few days, all this week. Got that intake there, and then that uh, oil pan right there is for a car Y block, like a 292, 312. Uh, truck is different. That's a car, and usually the cars are ripped out in the bottom because they hang so low. That one's got a few dents in it, but it's not ripped out. So that's a fairly valuable piece. To my knowledge, they don't repop those. And then we got the small block bill housing here. It does have one damaged spot right there, but it's not cracked. It's just, it has a tiny crack in it, but it's not all the way to the edge. So I think it can be repaired. And then I got this Edelbrock here. I'm not sure if that's for a small block or what that's for. Uh, it kind of looks different than this one. I know this one's a small block, so I don't know. Maybe that's a big block. I don't know. Maybe it's just the style of it. Who knows? But anyway, we got a Mopar bill housing here. That's kind of a cool one. I don't know exactly what it's for. I'll have to find the numbers on it and look it up. But I mean, there's a little bit of money sitting right there and it's all stuff that just came in for scrap. But I've got to head out. I've got a truck here to load crushed cars. I'm already running super far behind today. <laughs> it's just one of those days, you know. So I'm gonna head to the yard and get that truck loaded. We're working on finishing up these pallets of batteries. The trucks are gonna be here next week. We're gonna have one Monday, one Tuesday, and one Wednesday. One of them will be at my dad's yard, but the other two are gonna be here at this yard. What we have to do is we have to put cardboard at the bottom in between each layer on these, and then we have to put cardboard on the top. We have to band the top layer. Well, we don't have to, but we do just for security. And then we band them all to the pallets so they don't slide off during transport. And then we wrap them in this saran wrap right here. These big monstrosities are industrial batteries. They're huge, they weigh over 100 pounds a piece. And so we didn't double stack those, we just put one small pallet and one full pallet. Those will go as the same price as these big steel case batteries that are over here. The rest of these will all go as car batteries. Even these big golf cart batteries like this are technically classified as, as car batteries when we ship them in for scrap. So we're gonna have somewhere around 28 to 30 pallets between two loads, 14 to 15 pallets per load. Once we get these banded and wrapped, I wanna take them out and weigh them one at a time, spray paint the weight on them, that way we know exactly what we're putting on the truck. Alright guys, it's the next day now. Yesterday some crazy stuff happened in the afternoon and I wasn't able to record anymore. But now it's the next day and I've got good news and kind of bad news, kind of sad news. Uh, the good news is, is that I sold my Jeep and the sad news is, is that I sold my Jeep. It, I've had a lot of adventures in that thing, I've had a lot of fun in that thing, but I never drive it anymore. And I don't want it just to go to waste. So Bennett and I are going to run out there, show it to him so he can test drive it. And I'm pretty sure he'll want it and then we're going to head back home. Yeah, it was a good Jeep. 
this thing's seen a lot of dirt roads and adventures all over the state seen a lot of mushrooms but i've put maybe 500 miles on it in the last year or in the last six months especially since i got my truck over there so i never drive anymore so i'm definitely glad to see it go to a good home he'll have a lot of fun with it get it back on the road so it doesn't just deteriorate sitting around out here and good morning we're back again on monday i'm going to show you guys real quick what i didn't get to show you guys on friday about those batteries we did get a little bit of rain i think it was saturday night here's the batteries we've got them all lined up this is one load here almost one load we've got these industrial batteries over here i guess i'll show you these first we went through and weighed every pallet so we knew exactly what they weighed with this company we have to know what we put on the truck exactly we can't guess and we can't get trucks on our scales right now because we've got no room so we went through and weighed them all these are steel case batteries and these are industrial batteries they're all the same price so we'll put those on the truck first and then we'll start putting these on I think all together there's a little under 42,000 pounds of batteries here so that'll be enough for a load but yet it won't overload the truck you can put sometimes 45 46,000 pounds of batteries on but if you put that many a lot of times you overload the axles on the truck or the trailer or you don't get the weight distributed correctly so we have to put at least 40,000 pounds on or else they dock us so this way we're over that but yet we're not too heavy so this is about a perfect load right here We've got two more ready for the next load. I don't remember exactly what these weighed. We've got 2,700 pounds and 2,900 pounds here. So those are both pretty good pallets. I think we have five more stacked in here, and I think there's two more in the yard behind me. So we're going to need more than I thought. Normally, we only put 14 pallets on a truck, but because some of these pallets aren't very heavy, we're going to have to end up putting about 17 pallets on this load. Because some of these, like this in here, is only 2,200 pounds. That one's 2,100 pounds. And then those two pallets right there, those industrial batteries aren't very heavy. Shockingly, the steel case batteries over there are heavier than any of the others. Those are about 3,000 pounds a piece. I just did a quick count and we have 11 pallets stacked for the next load. And we're probably going to need about 16. All right, I believe we are done stacking batteries here at this yard. We have to go through and band a few more. We got most of them banded, but my helper had to go out to the other yard. My dad is stacking batteries over there, so he's gonna go help him finish getting that load ready. I've got a few things I gotta take care of here. The city of South Hutch is cracking down on anything they don't like. Uh, they already fined one guy like $1,100 for not painting his building in time, and they're taking him to court. So that's a big ordeal going on, bunch of drama right now. And they came by here this morning and talked to me for a little bit. Amongst other things, they want all this tree brush gone, which I know they want it gone. Unfortunately, the guy that was doing all the tree work for me quit. He quit several weeks ago. I haven't seen him since. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to clean all this up now. I've tried hiring a bunch of people to do it. It's 50 bucks. The place is right down the road. It's probably take about an hour to clean this stuff up. But nobody wants to make $50 an hour, so I guess I'll do it myself. In addition to that, they want the building up front completely painted, the entire building. They want all the broken windows and cracked windows fixed. Any spot that has plywood, they want that gone. And then they want the roof fixed on that building, which we were already talking to them about fixing the roof anyway. And we said, man, if you want the stuff looking nice, why won't you let us build a new building? And they said, oh, you can build a new building if you want to do this and this and this and cost you about another $35,000 on top of what the building would cost anyway. And we said, nah, we're not doing all that. We'll fix the one that's there. But that's already in the works. So they're not too worried about that, but they do want the rest of the building painted. And they want all this stuff cleaned up. They want this done today. So I've got to get on this right now. It won't be too big of a deal. I'm just going to take the loader and pick up as much of that as I can and just dump it in the back of my truck 
and I wasn't feeling real good this morning, but unfortunately the show must go on. Just like that. Then I'll dump it in the back of the truck, this little small group here, then I'll put the big group on top of it, haul it over there, dump it, and I think probably two more loads will get the rest of that down there. She's a little bit wide, hanging off the sides of the truck. And by a little bit wide, I mean a whole lot wide. But that's okay, I think she'll be fine. We'll just drive nice and slow, and if people don't like the way I drive, like I always say, they can get off the sidewalk. That looks much better. Needs mowed through here now because of all the grass that was underneath the tree brush, but we can worry about that later in the year. But anyway, I've got to finish banding these. I've got, I think, six pellets over here I got to band real quick, so it shouldn't take me too long to get this done. Like I say, it's a little bit easier with two people than it is just by myself, but I can do it by myself, so not a real big deal. There we go, got the last one done. I am done banding, now I just to wrap them, but I don't have any wrap. It's supposed to bring me some tomorrow so I can get them all wrapped. So I assumed that the guy that was helping me this morning was helping my dad all afternoon, but uh, I just found out that he had a blowout and he never made it over there. And then he said he's not going to be here tomorrow either because he's got something else going on. So uh, it's all me again tomorrow. It's been the story of our life. We had two other people that wanted a job and we said we'd hire them and then they didn't show up. And we don't tell them a price. We ask them how much do you want by the hour and they tell us their price. And if we can afford it, we say okay. And they still don't show up, so <laughs> I don't know what to do. But we do have one other guy, he said he can start next week, which won't do us any good for these batteries, but uh, maybe he can help us with some other stuff. And then other news, I had a pretty good deal come through. A guy came out and said, I've got an old, I think it was a 56 or 57 Chevy grain truck. I don't know what to do with it. And I know you get a lot of those. Where, where do you usually sell them at? And I said, well, usually I just cut them up for art. And I said, I've never actually been able to sell one. I sold one or two of them that were really nice that ran and drove, but most of them get cut up for art. And he said, well, what, should I advertise it on Marketplace or what? And I said, well, I'd buy it. What do you want for it? He said, I don't know. What's it worth? And I said, I don't know. I haven't seen it, but what color is it? And he said, it's red, which is a really good wall art color. And I said, well, he said, it's all there, all complete. And I said, you take a thousand bucks for it, sight unseen. And he says, yeah, I'd do that if you come get it. So my buddy's going to go get it for me. And the guy says, just to make sure you want this, I'll send you some pictures. So he sent me some pictures of it just now. And it has the wraparound back window. And it's pretty much a rust-free cabin clip. So uh, I may not cut that one up. But I'm about done for the day now. It's about 6 o'clock. I'm exhausted. I'm going to go ahead and grab this truck bed here, carry it in, set it in out of the way. As you can see, it is pretty well full in here. There's a little tiny path to get up on the scales. And that's about it. So I really need to get to crushing. But I won't be able to do that probably for another week or so.
there we go i got them all weighed i still have to wrap six more i think i couldn't wrap them where they were sitting at inside they were in the weeds and i just didn't feel like fighting with them so i went ahead and weighed them set them all out here the first loads are going to have 17 pallets the second load these are a lot heavier pallets some of these like this in here is 3260 there's a few of them like that 3,000 pounds or more and only going to need 15 for the second load so we're going to have two extra pallets but that's okay my dad needs pallets for his yard so uh, i guess i already took him inside the yard over there but he's going to come pick those up later in the week and take them over there so he doesn't have to stack quite as many And good morning. Today is the day. The first truck should be here today. Today is Wednesday. I'm supposed to have one again tomorrow and one again the next day. I don't know what time they're going to be here. They're supposed to be here between 8 and 11. So that means they'll probably show up sometime around 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon if it goes according to what most trucks do. That's the name of the game when you're loading trucks though is dispatch never quite relays the message to the driver that they're supposed to be there at a certain time and so the driver doesn't hurry, driver doesn't know and so the driver just shows up whenever the driver wants to and then you talk to dispatch and dispatch is oh I forgot I forgot I forgot but anyway that's neither here nor there I've got three more pallets I didn't get wrapped yesterday it was getting pretty hot and when you go around and around and around in circles it makes you a little bit dizzy so I just said you know what there's only three left I'll just do those first thing in the morning I'll get those done so far my help's not here uh, none of my dad's help showed up again today he hired two people to help him haul stuff out of a factory and neither of them showed up so now he's having to do that by himself so there's a good chance if my help doesn't show up here soon that I'm going to have to load this battery truck by myself, and that's going to be an absolute living nightmare. But uh, it is what it is. I'm used to it. But I guess we'll see what happens. I didn't get my camera out in time, but the truck's here. He drove right past me, so he must be lost. He's supposed to be here between 9 and 11, and it is 10.59, so uh, I guess he made it technically. <laughs> but, oh well, I guess I'll get him loaded. I'm by myself. My dad just left to go to that factory place, so he won't be back for about an hour and a half, so I guess it's all up to yours truly to climb back and forth. I gotta climb down this ladder every time, climb up in the back of the semi. I'm gonna have him park out there and grab the pallet with the pallet jack, pull it to the front. These weigh about 3,000 pounds a piece, roughly, so yours truly is gonna be pretty worn out by the end of this. Well, kind of good news. My dad, actually, they weren't able to load him, so he wasn't getting loaded up there, so he's gonna be back in just a minute. So that'll help a little bit. I'm still gonna have to climb back and forth, though, because it takes two people inside the trailer to be able to pull these up to the front. Jump out of the loader, run over here. I took my microphone off just to make it easier to carry the camera around, so it might sound a little different climb up in here my knees are gonna be feeling it today and I just wheel this under here like that and take him to the front this thing is crazy heavy
can't do it. I'm having to push them uphill because the yard's clear full, so I can't park them inside the yard where the street's level. And this street out here is a very, very gradual slope uphill, which isn't normally a big deal, but when you're pushing 3,000 pounds of batteries, even a tiny bit of slope makes a big difference. So uh, I'm just gonna wait till my dad gets here. <laughs> this is brutal. There we go. Load it all the way to the front. There's some heavy old pallets in here. Next load, none of them are nearly this heavy. I think the heaviest pallet on the next load is 3,000 pounds. Most of them are 24, 25, 2200. So it'll be a lot easier. We're gonna put two more here at the back, but I'll just set those in with the loader. Now that we've got that done, I'm taking a quick lunch break. And for my lunch break, I came out here this morning. I wanted to grab my GoPro so I could attach it to the windshield of the loader. And that way I could kind of put a time lapse on loading all those things into the trailer. I found my GoPro, I knew right where it was at, but I couldn't find my mount. And then I remembered my mount is in my camera bag. Started looking around, couldn't find my camera bag anywhere. And the last time I used it was in Nebraska. And I looked back at my videos and in my videos, I see me with the bag getting in my truck. So I know I had the bag when I got in the truck. So I assumed somebody had stolen it. So I spent this morning calling around to all the pawn shops and places like that saying, hey, if you see a camera bag come in, it's mine. Now I, all my camera gear was not in the bag. So I wasn't super worried about it. It's about a $250 bag, which is unfortunate. But uh, other than that, I wasn't super worried about it because all my high dollar camera gear is at home. Then I got to thinking about it. And that Monday that I got back, I had to film a promo for Surfshark. And so I came out here to the yard and I used my backpack as part of that promo. So I think I know right where it's at. And there it is. It's not exactly where I thought it was. Oh, I remember now. I laid it down on that fender. It must've just fallen off that fender. That's right. Well, it got rained on one time, got a little bit dirty, but uh, I think it'll be okay. It's a mostly waterproof, it's a water resistant backpack, but uh, I had it in Costa Rica and got an absolute monsoon on it and everything inside was okay. Mission accomplished, now I'm gonna head back to the yard and get to work. And good beautiful morning. I'm back out here again today. Yesterday afternoon I got quite a few cars processed. I didn't pull the aluminum wheels off of most of them. I pulled a few off. But most of them I just left the wheels on. I mainly just pulled the converters and the batteries. And my help got a hold of me late yesterday and he said that they were out of town the day before. Which I knew they were going to be out of town that day. But he said they didn't get home until 4 o'clock in the morning and he fell asleep and didn't wake up. And uh, you know what? I'm still a little bit upset because he knew it was really important that we desperately needed him to be here. For that battery truck and if he wasn't going to be here he should have let us know the day before that way we could have tried to figure something else out but it is what it is and i am desperate for help and so i'll take whatever i can get at the moment he's supposed to be here in a minute and so he'll should be here hopefully he shows up today he should be here for this next truck you know it's pretty nice out here this morning and my dad's a little bit short on pallets still even with the ones i'm going to be sending over with him so i figured i've got one small pallet left here i want to get rid of the rest of these in this truck bed i won't be able to get all of them on this pallet but i can get rid of a bunch of them at least and then i can move the truck bed inside without dumping batteries all over so i thought maybe you guys might find it a little bit interesting to see how we stack these on the pallet because you guys have seen me doing it in time lapse but you actually haven't seen me doing it the way you do it is you just kind of set them on there like that kind of put them over to the edge of the pallet every now and then if it hangs over a tiny bit that's fine but you don't usually want to hang them over the side too far now I'll put it like that and then what I'll do is I'll run a row of batteries that way all the way to the end and then again and again all the way to the end and every now and then when you get to the other end it won't fit long ways so you got to turn it sideways And there we go, I got the first layer done. Like I say, it's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you at least gotta put a little bit of consideration into it. Now this is where a lot of guys start messing up. This part here has been easy so far, but now if you look in here, I don't have a whole lot of batteries that size. It looks like I have one or two more that size that will work, 
the rest of these are either too tall or too short. A lot of guys would just start throwing them on there anyway and they wouldn't care. And so this corner over here would drop way down and so then the top layer would be falling off. When you're stacking batteries, it's always, always, always worth it to take the time to find the right size of battery. Unless there just are none, period, then you gotta make do with what you got. But if at all possible, dig out the batteries that will work and set the other ones to the side. Now we're on the top layer. Now this is where we can get rid of the weird batteries. I call them the weird batteries. Like these big golf cart batteries, I can put some of those on the edge. I can put lawnmower batteries in the middle. Uh, broken batteries like that one over there. If there's just something odd about them that makes them hard to stack on top of, now I can put them on the top layer. But now what I'll have to do with this one here is put a layer of cardboard on top and then I'll walk around it and wrap it. Now normally I band the top layer and then we band them to the pallet and then I go around each layer twice with the wrap. But my dad already took all the banding equipment back to his yard, so I don't have any banding equipment. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably go around the bottom layer twice, the middle layer three times, and the top layer four times. That's quite a bit extra wrap, but I just want to make sure they don't fall off while he's hauling this pallet back to the other yard. I got a little bit of bad news, a little bit of good news, and then some more bad news. Uh, the first bad news is, is that my help never did show up, call, text, nothing again today. So uh, I don't know. But anyway, the good news is, is that my dad's help did show up. That guy's helping my dad haul stuff out of that factory and they're getting quite a bit done today, so that's definitely good news. The other bad news is related to that though, that because my dad's busy doing that factory today instead of yesterday because no one showed up yesterday, now he doesn't have time to finish stacking his batteries. So that means I've got to stack five more pallets of batteries myself. Plus I have five steel case batteries I have to put on pallets as well, so I have to stack basically 10 pallets of batteries. I just got one more done, so that means I got four more to go. I don't have that many pallets, I've got I think two. So I'm going to have to find two more pallets to stack batteries on and then my dad's going to bring some pallets over for the steel case batteries. Well, like a dummy, when I went to get lunch, I left my camera laying out in the sun. So when I got back from lunch, it was extremely hot, overheated, wouldn't do nothing for about two hours. But in the last two hours, truck showed up, we got him loaded. Once again, no help today. <laughs> but uh, the driver actually this time was willing to hop up in there and help out. So that made it a little bit easier for the first probably half of the load. I had to climb back and forth between the loader and the trailer. But then my dad got here and so him and the driver were able to wheel him up front and I just drove the loader so I didn't have to hop back and forth. So that was really handy. It took a lot less time to load this load even though there was more pallets. So he's on his way out and I come back over here to the loader and this is what I see. Nice chunk of aluminum in the tire and I grabbed my pliers. I didn't think it was in that deep. I started wiggling it and I could hear it start hissing. So I just stopped, called the tire place. They're coming out now to boot it. Sometimes you can get away with putting a plug in these or maybe two plugs together. But uh, the problem with that is on front tires is picking up as much weight as I do. You just never know when those plugs are going to pop back out or fail or whatever. And then it's probably going to be right in the middle of loading a truck or something like that. And then you're going to be up a creek. So I, if it's a front tire, I usually just have them come out and boot it. It's 200, 250 bucks, something like that. It's a lot of money, but it's worth it for peace of mind. Now back tires, I'll put plugs in those all day long because those don't ever, ever have hardly any pressure on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and pop it out of there. See what it is. Whew, that's in there good. What in the world did I hit? That's a big old piece of aluminum. I'm trying to figure out what that came off of. It looks like something I should recognize, but I can't quite place it. I don't know. But I do have some good news. The other truck that was going to be here tomorrow that we were worried about them not getting here in the morning like they're supposed to and showing up in the afternoon like these other trucks have, uh, they called and said they just definitely cannot make it in the morning. So they canceled and they're just going to come back either Tuesday or Wednesday of next week because Monday's Labor Day. So that'll be nice. I don't have to stress quite as bad about getting these batteries done. I can come out here in the morning when it's a little bit cooler and I can finish stacking the last, I think I need, I think I need three more pallets, three more small pallets. And also because it was their idea to cancel, we're going to tell them that instead of going to the other yard, they've got to come here because before they said they're not switching. Absolutely will not switch. But now we said, well, we can't load them over there. We have to load them over here, which is technically true. But it's, I mean, we could load them over there if we really had to. It's just there's eight pallets over there and there's uh, 14 pallets or 13 pallets over here. So <laughs> it would take a whole lot more moving to get stuff from here to there than it would from there to here. So if we can just load them here, that'd be great because that way we can load them with the loader instead of the skid steer and life would just be a lot easier.
you know a lot of times people tell me it can't be as hot as what you say it is because there's no sweat dripping off your face so uh truth be told i like to wipe my face off because uh this doesn't look very good so usually before i get the camera out i wipe my face off so it's not covered in sweat there that's better and there we go i got the last oh my watch just let me know that i completed my exercise goal for the day already first thing in the morning i usually about quadruple my exercise goal every day but uh, anyway got the last two pallets stacked up ready to go i think all we have left to do now is put the steel cases on pallets the steel case batteries but i don't have enough pallets i'm out of pallets now so my dad will be here either later today or he'll be here tuesday with the rest of the pallets we'll get those banded down ready to go originally i was gonna do this as a start to finish type of deal where you see me start at the very beginning stack three loads of batteries load three loads of batteries and the whole nine yards but that third load uh, they called and they're actually not going to be here now until wednesday maybe even thursday they're not going to be here till late next week, so I'm not going to wait that long to record it. I've got something else really cool going on, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, I don't know which, or sometime next week anyway that I want to record, so I'm just going to go ahead and close this video out. I've had a lot of people ask me what we do with the batteries, and I've always told you guys, but I've never actually showed you guys, so now you know what I do with the batteries exactly. It's a lot of work, it's a lot easier when you have two people doing it, but it is what it is. At least I had help for probably the first half of it, so that was better than nothing, I guess. I've got several interesting videos coming up of the stuff we're doing around out here at the junkyard, stuff we don't normally do, so I think they'll be interesting, so be sure to stay tuned for those. And with that, I'm going to let y'all go. If you enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up on this video. Let me know something in the comments about this video that you enjoyed. As always, I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day, and remember to get out there and find an adventure. Just hopefully it's not stacking batteries, because it's not fun. <laughs> we'll see you next time. So actually, I already closed this video out like two hours ago. <laughs> But uh, I just got a phone call and found out some uh, interesting but not fun information. They actually rejected those last two loads of batteries that we just sent in. They said that those are not what they want to buy. And we said, well, what do you want to buy if you don't want to buy batteries? And so they sent us a great big long checklist. I've never heard of anything on this checklist. We have sold batteries now for 25 years, almost 30 years. And we've never heard of any of this stuff. So this company, this is a new company we've never dealt with before, and we will never deal with them again after we get this next load out. <laughs> we already got it locked in though, so we want to go ahead and get it gone. But I'll kind of show you guys what they're complaining about. Like this pallet here, it's done, ready to go. They would reject this pallet because there are really, well, there's three issues wrong with this pallet. Well, actually four, now that I think about it. First issue is they want it shrink-wrapped to the ground. They don't want that pallet exposed anywhere. And then you poke the forks, through the holes and that's where you pick it up and then the next issue they had which okay that one's okay there but this one here you see how the side post battery has the terminals facing out they said they always want the terminals facing in if we put them facing out we have to put cardboard in front of that battery just in case the off chance that that battery bumps up against another battery that has terminals facing out and somehow it ignites and catches stuff on fire i don't know we've been dealing with batteries for years you guys see how we have them stored in truck beds and we've never had an issue these are end-of-life batteries they are most of these are dead or in a doorknob but it is what it is the next thing they have an issue with is on top they want the cardboard completely covering the entire top and folded down over the sides so this in here is pretty good except for this corner because this battery is exposed a tiny bit they will reject that one this one here this they here they want that completely covered basically every layer the cardboard has to wrap over the layer below it and then they want it completely wrapped on top this in here is not even good enough they want no cardboard exposed at all on top they want it completely covered all of those things that i've mentioned so far are annoying but they're not that big of a deal we could do those if we wanted to if we knew in advance now we do know so for the future we could but probably the biggest issue we have is that they don't want odd pallets like this one here where it's not level it's multiple different sizes of batteries on it, which this is probably the worst pallet of all of them, so that's probably not a good example. I'll use this pallet for an example. This is one I just stacked this morning. You can kind of see how this pallet here, how it has car batteries, and then some other sizes of batteries, then a few semi-batteries over here, and one tractor battery. And then on the top, I've got semi-batteries, uh, little power chair batteries, lawnmower batteries. I've just got multiple different sizes on top. Like this one here, it's all car batteries on the first two layers, but then the top layer has multiple different sizes and so the top layer is all wonky they said they do not want them they have to be completely cube not necessarily cube or round but uh they can be rectangles but they have to be perfectly square on all sides including the top so we asked them well what do you do when you have odd sized batteries that are tall like this one here or that are small like this one here and they said the entire layer has to be nearly identical batteries on that entire layer that way it'll stay completely flat and they also said that they want a quarter inch 
of, of cardboard between each layer and on top. And obviously I could do that, but they said they want it to be fresh cardboard. They don't want old cardboard that's been sitting outside like we sent on the last couple loads. And so we'd have to go buy cardboard to put in there. It just, it's just gonna be an absolute nightmare. They said this load here, we told them it's already done. It's already stacked. They said, go ahead and send one last load. But in the future, they have to be done to these specifications. Oh, and also, you know how that last load we sent out of batteries, I think there was uh, four pallets of industrial batteries. There was two steel case batteries and then two pallets of those big, heavy 120 pound batteries. They said there can only be one pallet of industrial batteries per load. So they were pretty hot shot about that too. So basically what that means is that they don't want to do business with us. What they're looking for is people who have nothing but completely uniform batteries, places like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, places like that that get cores brought in and they take them and they put them on a pallet and they're all the same size and they stack perfectly cube and that's all they want to buy. They don't want to buy junkyard batteries.